Hello YouTube, my name is Nero, today we have some Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, and we now know which video games sold the best in 2016. So all this information is going to be coming from the NPD Group, which is actually a market research company that tracks new video game sales in the United States. They report every month, and then subsequently every single year, and recently they released their December 2016 report, which completed their 2016 yearly report. So the top 10 games games of 2016 in terms of sales go as follows. Infinite Warfare number one, Battlefield one at number two, The Division at number three, NBA 2K17 at number four, Madden 17 at number five, GTA five at number six, Overwatch at number seven, although they did note they actually don't have access to Battle.net digital sales, so I imagine Overwatch is going to rank slightly higher than where it is right now because a lot of people bought Overwatch via Battle.net digitally, so just keep that in mind. Black Ops 3 at number 8, FIFA 17 at number 9, and Final Fantasy 15 at number 10. It turns out Infinite Warfare, despite all the pushback, is the best-selling game of 2016, although Battlefield 1 is also incredibly popular. It's been well documented that the best-selling games typically tend to be shooters as well as sports games, right? Madden's, your FIFA's, your NBA 2K's, your Call of Duty's, your Battlefield's, and stuff like that. Those are always the most popular games every single year and as you guys saw there there was what maybe one game there that was not actually a sports game or a shooter game if you consider GTA 5 to be a shooter game and that's going to be Final Fantasy 15 that is uh it's pretty insane like that just goes to show like what the gaming industry as a whole tends to favor I find it interesting that Call of Duty is still number one despite all the pushback right it turns out that likes and dislikes on trailers don't actually turn into game sales because of course Infinite Warfare is like the second most disappointing liked video in the history of YouTube. Of course, Battlefield 1 had a ton of likes and was wildly popular amongst even the Call of Duty community. People were highly anticipating this game, but that did not actually lead to any more sales, I suppose, for Battlefield. Or maybe it did. We have some more information here. So this is actually going to be the ninth consecutive year that Call of Duty led sales in December, which is very interesting. Of course, December is when most games are fighting. That's why most games release in October, November, and December for the holiday season, because December is when people are spending money. And when people are spending spending money, Call of Duty is always the best-selling game. Gaming as a whole in 2016 fell off a little bit because money spent on the industry was down about 12% as compared to 2015, so that kind of explains to an extent that Infinite Warfare's sales are down compared to Black Ops 3. Well, it turns out that gaming as a whole sales are down compared to 2015. Console and mobile games, their sales dropped 6% compared to 2015, but PC game sales grew 5%, which I think is something we're going to see as a trend. I have a feeling more and more people are going to get into PC gaming, so I imagine we're going to see that grow over the years. Battlefield as a whole is much more popular this year than it has been in previous years, not to say that it was not popular in previous years, but I'm just saying it's more popular this year than it was prior, and I think that's something to do with all the pushback towards Call of Duty that we saw. In 2011, Battlefield 3 was a pretty popular game. It ranked fourth amongst all games in 2011, and in 2013, Battlefield 4 came out, and it also ended up ranking fourth amongst all games in 2013, so it's always been pretty popular, but it was never number one or number two. Well, Battlefield 1 is number two this year, so that's a lot of extra hype for Battlefield. It's also also worth noting that in 2015, Star Wars Battlefront came out, another EA game, which is somewhat similar to Battlefield, but of course has all the hype of the Star Wars brand behind it. It ended up finishing fourth in 2015 behind Black Ops 3, Madden 16, and Fallout 4. And Battlefield 1 sold way more than Battlefront. So I think that's something to be said for Battlefield 1. It's definitely a popular game, just apparently not as popular as Call of Duty. Call of Duty is just, it's so freaking popular like not only is it the best-selling game just about every single year but the previous year's call of duty usually makes its way into the top 10 of the next year as well putting two call of duty games in most top 10 lists so for example in 2016 infinite warfare was number one and black ops 3 was number eight we had two call of duty games in the top 10 list in 2015 both black ops 3 and advanced warfare made the top 10 in 2014 both advanced warfare and ghost made the top 
top 10 in 2013. Both Ghosts and Black Ops 2 made the top 10 in 2012. Both Black Ops 2 and Modern Warfare 3 made the top 10. The list goes on and on and on. In fact, since 2007, when Call of Duty 4 came out, which helped launch Call of Duty towards the top of the gaming scene, there have only been three total years between 2007 and 2016 where Call of Duty was not the best selling game of any given year. One of these years was actually 2007 when Call of Duty 4 came out. That year, Call of Duty 4 ended up ranking third amongst all the games in 2007. Another year was actually 2008 when World of War came out. It actually ranked sixth behind a bunch of Wii games and GTA 4. And then the next time was actually in 2013 when Call of Duty Ghost came out. It ended up finishing second behind only GTA 5. So consistently, the only games that can actually beat Call of Duty would be a brand new GTA game. GTA 4 and GTA 5 both beat out Call of Duty in the respective years they came out. But aside from that, Call of Duty is just the best-selling game year in and year out. It is a titan of industry. There's seemingly nothing that can stop the momentum that Call of Duty has. Like, we had an unprecedented amount of hate for the new Call of Duty game this year, right? And every single year, there's always hate. People always say, oh, this game's gonna suck, I'm tired of the franchise, so on and so forth. But overall, the game still does incredibly well. Well, this year, we had an unprecedented amount of hate. We had so many people who said they were quitting the franchise, said they were going over to Battlefield 1. And even from a YouTube perspective, we had a a lot of influential people in the community say, you know what, I am not playing this new Call of Duty game, I am tired of the futuristic setting, I am tired of the unfair microtransaction policies, I am moving over to Battlefield, I'm moving over to Overwatch, I'm going to the Division full-time, I'm going to become a full-time live streamer, I'm going to become a variety channel, so on and so forth, like the list goes on and on, and not to name names, because that's incredibly rude, it's incredibly uncalled for, it's incredibly just unprofessional, but a lot of these YouTubers are not finding a lot of success, and that is what I've always called the curse of the Call of Duty channel. Like, once you build your channel around Call of Duty, once that's what you're known for, you're pretty much pigeonholed into only posting Call of Duty because the Call of Duty community is not receptive to watching other stuff. It just, it's the very nature of the Call of Duty community. I mean, there are some channels, a small handful of channels that were able to break away from Call of Duty and start posting other stuff. But for the most part, you, you don't see that. And a lot of the channels that decided, and again, I'm not, I'm not going to say names. It's incredibly rude, incredibly uncalled for. But a lot of people that decided to break off from Call of Duty this year and become a full-time Battlefield person or a full-time overwatch person or a full-time division person nine times out of ten these channels are not doing very well compared to last year compared to what they were doing when they were a cod channel they're struggling to rebuild that audience because that's just that's what the call of duty community is like and some people may disagree with that statement some people may think that the call of duty community is not like that that those are just a couple of extreme situations but i'm telling you guys i've seen it happen to channel after channel after channel there's a reason why you know, I, I only post call of duty like if you look at my channel for example and i post overwatch Overwatch, I, I don't even get a ton of views here on YouTube. I'm a small channel in the grand scheme of things, but my Overwatch videos, views cut in half, sometimes cut into to 25% of what a Call of Duty video would do. Same thing goes for my Battlefield videos. Same thing goes for like old Let's Plays and stuff I did back in the day. Basically, you find yourself in a situation where most Call of Duty channels have a backup channel for everything else because they know if they post anything not COD to their main channel, you know, RIP that channel. It, it just, it's not going to be doing so well. So I find that to be very, very interesting. And over the years, every single year, guys, you hear people saying Call of Duty is going to die, right? You, every single year, a new game comes out and it's going to kill Call of Duty. This year, it was Battlefield 1. The year before, you know, we had Destiny. We had The Division. We had Titanfall 1. We had Titanfall 2. Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. We had Halo Reach. We had Halo 4. The list goes on and on and on. Every single year as a YouTuber, I hear this stuff. I hear that COD's dying, that, you know, this other game's going to take over, that, you know, COD channels are going to go down the toilet, that everything is just going to collapse on itself. And inevitably, every single year, Call of Duty is the best-selling game that year. The COD community does not actually flock over to their game, uh, to like their new game that they're so hyped about. They stay with Call of Duty. They only watch Call of Duty. It's, just, it's such a weird phenomenon. And the reason that I bring this up is because, again, we had an unprecedented amount of hate for Call of Duty this year, and at least in my opinion, an unprecedented amount of hype for other games, and still Call of Duty is the best-selling game, and the Call of Duty community itself still kind of goes back to COD. You know, I'm sure a bunch of people went off to play Battlefield. They enjoy Battlefield and Call of Duty this year. Same with all the other shooter games that came out this year as well. Ultimately, people keep coming back to COD for one reason or another, and I think it's also important to understand that even though, like, 
We feel so we represent the majority of COD fans here on YouTube. In reality, we are a very small subsect of the overall Call of Duty community. The vast majority, your average Call of Duty player, I would say, is not somebody who gets the max rank in every game, is not somebody who has a like a 3 KD and a 3 win loss and watches YouTube videos and plays game battles. Your average Call of Duty fan is Joe Blow that plays a couple matches after work. Your average Call of Duty fan doesn't mind that supply drops are in the game and gets excited excited when he's able to actually get supply drops. He doesn't mind maybe necessarily the idea of supply drop weapons coming to the game, whereas here on YouTube, like, that's like the most hated topic of all is supply drops and supply drop weapons. So, I think it's important to remember that here on YouTube, and it's something I have to constantly remind myself, because again, I am prone to an unholy amount of feedback, and it's overwhelming at times, especially leading up until the launch of Infinite Warfare, it felt overwhelming, the amount of people that were saying, COD sucks, COD's dead, Battlefield's gonna take over, that eventually, even I started to drink the Kool-Aid, but I still, I maintained that I predicted, you know, that Infinite Warfare was going to be a best-selling game of 2016, especially because of Modern Warfare Master being tied to it, but still, it's interesting to see this phenomenon that is the Call of Duty community. What does this mean for the future of the Call of Duty series? I guess time's going to tell. Honestly, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I think that Call of Duty might have a resurgence. Like, even though it's still the best-selling game, it's selling a fraction of what it used to sell back in the day. That's just how popular the series actually is. Like, back in... You know, 2010 to 2013, that was like the peak of the Call of Duty series in terms of sales, and it's declined pretty much every year since then, but it's still the best-selling game every year. I have a feeling that if the next game for Call of Duty 2017, which is made by Sledgehammer Games, if it goes back to the classic Call of Duty formula, boots on the ground, and then gives us an old war, something maybe we haven't seen in a while, or, or something we haven't really seen at all, like Vietnam, then I think we would see a lot of old-school Call of Duty fans returning to the franchise. It's at the point right now where, yeah, Call of Duty gets new fans, right? It's a good comparison. I remember seeing a video about this a while back, but World of Warcraft is a game that's been out forever. It's been out since 2004, and they are they continuously update it. It's one game that has been continuously updated for over a decade now, again, since 2004. And somebody said that the game itself, it isn't really finding new fans. At this point, pretty much everybody has tried out that game. So what they need to do is continue making people want to play the game that already have it and already have an active subscription to it, but at the same time, they need to find ways to bring back old fans, because again, they, so many people have played the game over the course of the past decade that pretty much everyone's tried it at this point, right? So, you're not going to find a lot of new fans, the best thing you can do is bring back a bunch of old fans, and I think the same thing is true for Call of Duty. At this point, sure, we have new, new fans every single year, that happens, but it's nothing compared to the amount of people that have already played Call of Duty. Again, going back to 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, like, those were the, those were the big years for COD, right? And a lot of those people are no longer playing the game. I mean, that's evident by the fact that you look at the sales for Black Ops 1 versus Black Ops 3, Black Ops 1 sold a freaking buttload more, right? Modern Warfare 3 sold infinitely more than Infinite Warfare has so far, right? So there's a lot of people that have played Call of Duty but have stopped playing the series. And if Call of Duty wants to have a resurgence, they need to bring back those old fans. Rather than trying to bring in new fans, bring back all the old ones. There are tens of millions of old fans that no longer play the series. If they see a new Call of Duty game that's set in World War II, set in Vietnam, goes back to what Call of Duty was like back when they used to play it back in the day, then I think we're going to see a resurgence. And that's crazy to say, because even though it's on the decline, Call of Duty is still the most popular game out there right now. Make whatever arguments you want for like League of Legends and CSGO, so on and so forth. Like games that have come out a long time ago, but in terms of new sales every single year, you can't beat COD. It's crazy. Makes no sense, man. It's, it's such a ridiculously popular series. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude the video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts down there in the comment section below, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.